crafty friends, it's Jess from JessCrafts.com and today I'm here with a card featuring Newton's Nook Design stamps. This week at Newton's Nook Design's blog we are featuring some holiday cards using some of the older holiday stamp sets and this is why we're kind of waiting for our October release where there will be a few more new holiday stamp sets. We just wanted to provide you some inspiration as we know people usually get started a bit early on their cards and so for today's card I am showing you a design that can be mass produced and the reason that I am looking to mass produce this design is because I want to make some cards for donating to the Caring Hearts card drive and this is a card drive that collects cards for um, seniors and people living in nursing homes and just try to bring a little bit of cheer uh, during the holidays and I'm going to leave you a link to the Caring Hearts card drive so you can find out more information and where you can mail your cards to. I believe there are addresses in Canada and in the United States but definitely check that out. So for today's card, I am using the Beautiful Blizzard Snowflakes, and I'm using all six of the snowflakes featured in the set. Beautiful Blizzard is one of my personal favorite stamp sets from Newton's Nook Designs. I just think the snowflakes are really unique and gorgeous. And for today's card, I want to be able to stamp it multiple times, so I'm using my Misty Stamping Tool. And I want to layer the snowflakes. I want them to overlap each other. So I'm stamping one, uh, sorry, three snowflakes on one half of my Misty on the top, and then I'm stamping three snowflakes on the bottom of my Misty, so that way they can be layered on top of each other. And I don't have to remove them from the Misty, but instead can stamp one side and then on the other and fill my whole card. So you see there, as I stamped the first snowflakes, then I positioned the second set of snowflakes over them, closed the door on my Misty, and uh, now I have two sets of snowflakes on the misty door so that way I can line up the cardstock in each of the corners and get these overlapping snowflakes. My idea behind it was to be able to do this in a couple of different color schemes to appeal to a variety of um, recipients. So my mom loves pink and so she was kind of the inspiration behind this particular card set. Um, and then my grandma's favorite color was blue, and so she was kind of the inspiration behind that one. I thought, like, let me, you know, try to um, make cards that would be loved by some different people. So I thought, I'll make a whole color range of cards. And so I used three different inks, and little later on I will talk about how I picked my ink colors and my ink swatch system. Before I do that, though, I wanted to show you um, how I did my sentiment. So I love that the Misty allows you to re-stamp things, but in this case, I'm um, going to do my stamping on a regular block because I don't want to move any of those stamps out of my Misty in order to put the sentiment there because I want to be able to keep stamping. And I did this first card step by step through for the video, but when I did the card a second time, instead I just stamped all of the card bases, then I put the sentiment on all of the card bases, then I heat embossed all the card bases, so I did it like in batches instead. So I stamped down the sentiment with a block. I'm using VersaFine Onyx Black ink because it is a sticky ink that will hold this clear embossing powder. And by clear embossing the sentiment, even though it does add a little bit of extra time to the process, it makes it a lot more readable. Um, and so I felt like that was important and it adds a little bit of interest to the card. If you're um, getting this card, you might think that it's just a simple piece of pattern paper with a stamp on it, you know, a stamped sentiment, or even that it's printed like that. So by adding that little bit of dimension with the embossing powder, it just makes it feel a little bit more special and um, makes it a little bit more clearly handmade. And so I'm going to use my heat gun to emboss that. I started with the embossing powder bag before it so that it wouldn't stick anywhere that I didn't want it. But because it's clear embossing powder, that's not um, as big of a deal, which is one reason that I prefer to use it over black embossing powder when stamping a sentiment. Once I had stamped my sentiment, I tried to approach these card drives sometimes as a little bit of like a stash buster where I try to use up a supply during the card making process. So I love, like many people, to collect ribbons and fibers and twine and things like that. But then I don't always use them on a card, or if I do use them on a card, you only use a small portion, like maybe five or six inches across a card. 
but when I'm mass producing cards, it gives me an opportunity to use a lot more of my ribbon or a lot more of my buttons because I'm going to be using it across multiple cards. So um, I do like to try to incorporate those things on these cards because I do want to, um, you know, downsize my stash over time. So in this particular instance, I decided to find a pink ribbon that I had quite a bit left over of, and so I picked this pink lace, and as you can see, I cut it a little bit longer than the card because I personally prefer to tuck the edges over rather than cut right against the edge of the card because I find sometimes that um, as the ribbon starts to fray at the edges, it makes your card look a little bit less finished. So I'm going to tuck those edges over and then put it on a pink card base um, as the sentiment will still be pretty readable inside of the pink card base. So uh, as I said, this is a mass produced card, so I'm going to make a second version of it. At the top of the video, you saw the blue version of the card. And I have these ink swatches from Jennifer McGuire, and I'll leave you a link in the video description below to them. I'm sure most of you have seen them before, and she features them a lot in her videos. But what I did personally, um, similar to uh, her system of organization, is that I stamped all of the um, colors in the same flower, so that way I could kind of compare them apples to apples um, with the same kind of stamp. And then I used the Misty for that too, so in case there was any trouble with the impression, I could stamp again and get a really crisp, full impression. And then I sorted all of the ink swatches by color. So rather than putting all of my Alta New inks together, all my Hero Arts inks together, I instead put all of my blue, all of my pink, all of my purple inks together so that I can see them side by side and it makes it a little bit easier to pick colors. I find that most dye inks on the market act the same um, and give similar impressions and similar looks, especially if you're using something like the Misty where you can stamp it again even if there's trouble with the impression. And so I don't think that it matters so much what the brand of the ink is as what the color of the ink is. And that's how I kind of pick my colors which to get is what's available in a small size so I can store more of it and which colors do I like or you know if I find like a really good deal on um, inks. And so I have a whole mixture. I have Alta New, Hero Arts, Memento, and different kinds of dye inks. I keep my Distress inks, however, in a separate set of these of those um, swatches and pockets because I don't use those necessarily for the same techniques. So that goes in my drawer with my Distress inks separately. And so again, you can see there that I am able to use those arranged stamps on the Misty to mass produce this card in a whole new color and I can continue to change the colors. I can create a rainbow by using um, different colors on each of the snowflakes or I can continue to create these monochromatic cards and therefore get a lot of different looks but keep the same arrangement and um, definitely get a lot of them produced. In this particular instance I went with the Happy Holidays in the snowflake so that um, it could fit a more uh, wider range of people and not just people who celebrate Christmas. And also I decided again on this one that I wanted to use up some ribbon since that was part of my you know personal challenge with this. And you can see here that I decided to keep it simple with the ribbon. And so what I did was I took an entire piece of ribbon and wrapped it around the card and tied it. And I find that to be a little bit easier. It uses a bit more ribbon than if you were to like tape down the edges and tie a knot instead, but because you can wrap it all the way around the card, tie a simple knot, now you can move it up and down the card until you find a position you like, and then tape it down, and you also don't have to put any adhesive on the front of the card for that. So that is it for my tutorial today. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you are interested in more crafting tutorials, be sure to subscribe to my channel. Check the video description for links to the products, to the ink swatches, the car drive, Newton's Nook, etc., etc. And thanks for watching. Have a great day. Bye.